Welcome, Welcome to, to the Mother Daughter Ish Podcast. It's your mama's favorite podcast. And the podcast your daughter always wanted. This is Miss Dawn. And I'm Jalik. From the 713. Houston, y'all. Get connected and stay connected weekly as new shows debut on Sunday, Wednesday, and please check out our Saturday Out and About showcases. Enjoy the show. Please subscribe, like, share, comment, and tell every woman on the planet that you know about our show. Here's our show for today. Copyright disclaimer under section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowances made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. It is illegal to make a false copyright claim and such actions may lead to our party seeking compensation for losses. This video was created and published by the mother daughter is showing their personal capacity. The opinions expressed in this video are the creator's own and should not be taken as a definitive fact. The validity of any evidence provided should be independently consulted and researched and resource verified for authenticity. And the mother daughter is show takes no responsibility for the actions of those viewing this video. Thank you so kindly. March the 9th, day after your birthday, Angie. You're getting old, girl. Yes. <laughs> All right. So today uh, we have an interesting a celebration for women's history, but our topic today is luxury car ish. Angie never sat in a luxury car and she got an opportunity to do it in February. So we have to talk about that. And then at the end, please stay tuned because you'll get to see some pictures. But also, if you go back and you look at our last Saturday of the month of of um, February, you'll get to see all of the cars and them sitting in and everything. At the end, we're just going to show you one of each. But for Women's uh, History Month, we are celebrating that in 1848 in Su uh, Seneca Falls, New York, there was a celebration for women's rights and it was the first convention that was held and i think by the time you get to the part where you're having a convention that means you're serious people are going to start taking you start taking yeah. you serious and i find it so interesting how women had to uh fight so so hard and so long just to be if not equal but at least recognized mm -hmm. So I think that's interesting. I wish that now they still had uh, different types of women conventions that really focused on us continuing having the right to do so many things that I guess people forget that they have the right to do. Um, so I want to know what was it like sitting in a $350,000 car? That was that AMG that you first sat in. No, pay. Yeah, the one that she likes. The, the yeah, I always get mixed up with the letters and stuff, but it was nice. It was really nice. I can see why she likes the one she wants. The letters too, but yeah, I can see why she likes the one she wants, the specific one. Didn't know that thing was like sitting in a pile of butter, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. So what happened is that I, whenever I go to a new city or a new town or a new wherever country, I <laughs> always go and look for the Mini Cooper dealership for a couple of reasons. One, I like to visit their location and post it on my Instagram uh, Mini Cooper page. And then number two, I like to go and then find out about their groups that they have there and get the list mm -hmm. so that then I can, you know, join them on Facebook and all that. I mean, on Instagram and all that. So we were looking for a Mini Cooper dealership because that's my favorite car. Uh, we were looking for a Mini Cooper dealership and we ended up finding a mechanic shop that only services classic Mini. So we did get some pictures there and had fun with that. But then the next day we were like, you know, we got to go. And we were already going to be downtown. Yeah. So we said, well, since we're downtown, we'll find it. And we found Brahmins, B-R-A-U-M-A-N. We found Brahmins, which he owns so many dealerships, like from used cars to brand new to luxury to like out of this world. But we found the... Um, mini cooper place not thinking we were going to get the surprise of our life and i think for me if you and peyton weren't nosy and would have went to the other building i think for me i would have never thought to go over there because i was fo so focused on the mini cooper area mm -hmm. and of course the is on the other side so i'm used to seeing mini and biddy and, and mini and biddy 
I'm, I'm, used to seeing, I'm used to seeing Minnie and Beamers together. So that's nothing new. So I was over there doing my pictures, taking photos, talking to the salespeople, talking to this couple that was getting ready to buy a Minnie. It was their second one. The husband had one and he was buying his wife a brand new one. So I was mm-hmm. talking to them and then just, you know, just talking around and asking them if they were going to the Minnie Takes the States and they had never heard of it. So I was just minding my business. And then I was looking for y'all. So I said, I'm just going to go back to the beginning. This is where we started. So if they're looking for me, they could just come right back in and find me. Yeah. And then y'all came in and said, oh my goodness, they have a, and I'm like, what are y'all talking about? Like I was focused on the minis. What was the first luxury car there that you set in other than those minis? Cause the one that Peyton set in, the uh, seats were made out of lambskin and it had the real wood grain on the inside. But what was the first one you were like, oh my gosh, I have to get in there. I say the Bentley for sure, other than the Range Rover truck that I, I mean, the, the Jeep truck that I really like, um, but it would be the Bentley in that Rolls Royce that, uh, the one where the doors opened like the opposite way. I really like those. Those were the songs that stood out for me. And then I wish we would have gotten to sit in the ones that were locked, but I know why they was locked. I ain't, I ain't trying to be funny, but I'm seriously thinking about getting my Mini Cooper doors to open the opposite way. I was going to do the Lamborghini two, two, three years ago. And I thought, nah, because that's not even in our, that's not even in our family of cars. It's like Rolls Royce, BMW, Mini Cooper. Mm-hmm. So that Lamborghini doesn't fit into our thing. And then plus it just looks weird. Like remember we were at the Walmart in Miami and we saw the door, the cab that the doors. Yeah. Up like that. I was like, oh, that's kind of cool cab right there. So he got that custom made like that. So I'm really thinking about doing that because I'm very intrigued with doors that open the opposite way. I find that to be quite interesting. Like the, um, there's a lot of old cars that are like that, that open up like that. Like the other car that I'd like to collect would be an Isetta. And the Isetta opens from the front, you know, where the hood is. Mm -hmm. It opens from the front like that. So I love that little car. Um, That's different. Oh, it's very cute and it's very different. And they're very old, like 1950, 60, 70. Like I want a 72, of course, because that's the year I was born. But I think I had a change of mind on three spending $350,000 car money on a car after I sat in that AMG and the seats just like hugged your thighs, your hips, your back, everything. And I was like, oh, now I see why people like these cars. Like I understand it. And then you you know did you notice that I did not sit in the Rolls Royce or the Bentley or any of that? Cause my mind will get to thinking like how I'm gonna get this three fifty. Hmm. Like when we left there, we was like, okay, how we gonna get this money? <laughs> you know? But I I don't like to put myself in situ- see. I know that the AMG. I know I don't like that style of car at all. I love the inside. I'll ride with whoever wants to ride me around. Yeah. But as far as like me buying it and and loving it like I love my Mini, no, I I don't my spirit doesn't speak for it so i'm not i wasn't worried about that one but that 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 uh rolls royce dawn that was a little threatening that was like man i'm gonna need a whole new house if i buy this car because if you got a three hundred and fifty thousand, four hundred, five hundred thousand dollar car you need at least a five million dollar home i don't want a five million dollar home so it's like <laughs> think, think twice about this but um I felt like all of the luxury cars that I physically got to see in person that I got to touch and take pictures, I feel like I didn't see one, you know, just none of us said, oh, it's not worth that price. Yeah, that's like, true. We'll see a lot of other cars and we'll be like, I'm not going to name any cars, but there's a really famous car that a lot of people love right now that I'm just like, yeah, but it's not worth it. It, it, it. It's not pretty enough. It's not sexy enough. It's not top level enough for me to ever want one. It does a lot of new AI stuff, but I don't care about that at this moment. So I wouldn't spend the money on one. Um, so it doesn't, a lot, a lot of people love this car, but I don't care for it. Um, but I felt like every one of those cars was absolutely worth the money for whoever feels like that's the car that they wanna drive. I've sat inside of Lamborghinis, too low on the ground, feel like you're sitting on your on the concrete. I don't care for those, the front is too long. Yeah. I, I've sat inside of Corvettes, of, of course. Um, I remember one time your dad wanted a Corvette so bad. I was like, no, you will not be getting a Corvette. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, they weren't expensive like that. It's just like, I know he he didn't know how to act in a BMW. So I know in a Corvette, he was going to be a fool. Mm-hmm. So I was like, no, we are not getting a Corvette. Um, 
So I've sat in a Corvette before, I've been in many other cars, but as far as real luxury, I would have to say that the, the, the Rolls Royce and the AMG and the Bentleys was probably the most expensive car I saw. Now, the one that I literally could see you driving was the little white one that you sat down in, the little sports Bentley, the drop top one, the white one. The I thought that was a Rolls Royce. Oh, it might have been. See, I It was know. like white and green or white and blue. I don't remember. I just remember it was white. It was drop top. And the price tag on it was oh, like, I think I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that one looked good. really good on you. But the other one that looked good on you was your favorite car that you want, which is a what? That Jeep Rubicon. The Jeep that truck. Rubicon. The truck. Though. I guess because you're taller than me, you looked good in a higher sitting up situation. Uh, better than in an SUV, but in that Rubicon, it was like, okay, that fits her. She mm -hmm. that, that car looks like I already know how I'm getting it wrapped. Look. I know I saw that and I was like, man, that's that that's right there. That's that was real nasty looking. That I saw it nice. on TikTok and I was like, yeah, that was meant for me to see that on this feed. That is very, very nice. But what I think I love about that Rubicon is them darn wheels. Yeah. Oh my goodness. It'd be hard to slash those. Not even about slashing. It's about being able to go through sand and oh, be able yeah. to go through, go through snow and to be able to be on the road and know that during the rain you're gripping so hard. Then I'd, I'd have, have to be the one ride. people call on to get their cars out of stuff when they stuck. Right. And then also I like the fact that it has a little small truck on the back. Yeah. So if you need to haul something like a refrigerator, if you need to haul a washer and dryer or whatever you need for your house or whatever, then you've got you've got enough space on the back where you wouldn't need nobody to help you too much you know how you go to the store you want to pick up a bookshelf and you're like yeah i can't get it in this mini cooper i can get yeah. it in this SUV. you know you you go to the store in the wrong car you find something you like and it's like uh oh yeah so that that right there that situation was very nice and you know they have all these jeep clubs i'd you know, have to have, have it in a garage though if i'd like you oh, know of course oh of course um yeah. one of our mini cooper members she also has a jeep i think hers is the jeep uh wrangler or something it's a big big big, mm -hmm. big huge car and so she's in the Mini Cooper Club and in the Jeep Club, and they have way more fun. I feel like the Rubicons are like the Wranglers, but they're more boxy. Looking. Yeah, it's a little bit more sassy. I think the the, yeah. the the Wrangler is like, boom, here I am. I'm a Jeep. You know, I can conquer the road. And the Rubicon is like, yeah, I'm 60 and I can conquer it too. It's really cute. Mm -hmm. It really yeah. is, it almost reminds me a little bit of the family of the um, Hummer. Remember when they made the mm -hmm. Hummer with the back uh, with the back thing on the back? Yeah, so it's real, in the it's trucks. Real, yeah, it's real boxy, but it's got a sex appeal to it. Um, very, very nice. Very, very high sitting up. But after you got in it, the actual part wasn't higher as I thought it was. I thought it was going to be way up there. Because I said, get in there, see if you can see. And I was like, oh, well, she can see. Yeah, it's that's not like being in a suburban or something where the front, like the dash, where it's too much dash space or like the front is too long. I, I'd be just fine. I would like to test drive one next. Absolutely. Uh, we have places here you could do that. But, you know, I will say to anyone who's listening to us right now, if you've not gone out and at least test drove one, touched one. Or seven, test drive your favorite car. That's where you start, too. That's what I'm saying. Your favorite yeah. car. If you have not gone out and test drove your favorite car or either any luxury car that you possibly have seen on TV or on a movie and you're like, yeah, it ain't all of that. or all, I'm telling you, once you see it, you touch it and you feel it you start to then understand why someone would pay $350,000 for a car. Like you start find to, every excuse to go somewhere. Yeah. You, you, you start to understand why people pay that kind of money for cars, because I forever have thought, well, why would somebody pay $350,000 for a car? And they only have a hundred thousand dollar home. Like, I guess it doesn't matter if that's the thing that you want, then you want it. And if you spend more time in the airplanes or in the cars, then that's what you want. I know the first time I ever stepped foot to tour, not to be in, because I ain't got it like that. First time I ever stepped foot into a private jet, it was like, oh, so you saying I can go in the bedroom and go to sleep while the plane is going. Oh, so you're saying I can literally sit at the dining room table on the plane and eat a whole full course of meal, drink wine, whatever I want to do. Instead of being oh, cramped up in a three person row. Yeah. Oh, so what you're saying, there's like real awesome leather sofas in here where we could have like literally a house party or what y'all used to call it kickback on the airplane. So I was like, then at that point, like, oh, okay, I get it. I understand because I, 
many years ago when I had it, I thought about joining a, a private a private airplane club, and I think you pay like twelve hundred dollars a month, and you can fly unlimited anywhere you want to go. Mm. I thought about doing it, and I had somebody that was going to partner in with me because you know both were doing business, both making money. Thought about doing it, and then we just never did do it. And the reason I got the idea is because you may not know this person, but the lady Sarah Blakely, who who created the Spanx company. Mm. Her husband has a membership program like that for private planes. And I met her in Atlanta when I was a guest for Wall Street Journal. Uh, they had they used to have this meeting that they would do a few times a year called uh, Women in Business or something about being in business. I forgot. And I went to Atlanta with them, Dallas, with all kinds of places. And so I hate that they don't do that uh, event anymore because that's where I got to meet Sarah Blakely and her husband. And he was explaining to me about the private plane thing. And he said, just go check one out. Mm -hmm. he said, just check it out. And when he said that, I went to go check it out. I don't know if you know this or not, but if you ever want to get kind of fancy and you ever want to do photos, there's a company here in Houston that will do your photo shoot in a private jet. Mm. They do the whole, every day roll out the red carpet. They do the, you getting on the runway and getting out of your whatever car. And that's a nice little flex for your birthday. It really, really is. Uh, it's not really for take me. a picture like Simon. because if we're not flying the plane, I'm not for to pretend like it's my plane. But I just want to take a picture like her. Simon, right? And guess what? It don't <laughs> yes. like Simon. Oh God, we got a show coming up where we're gonna be talking about that. Um, cost two hundred and fifty dollars, which is nothing, 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 because you pay more than that sometimes for photo shoots, six seven hundred dollars. But I just wanted you to know because Peyton was going to do it for her sweet 16, but we ended up going to Puerto Rico instead. But, oh, that's uh, kind of a, yeah, I think I'd kind of go to so Puerto Rico. Make, make yourself a note and tell your friends too, because, you know, you can muster up $250 to do a, a, a private jet photo thing. I mean, they do the whole A one. person or a group? The photo session is 250 It doesn't matter how many people. Are oh, okay, because you know, sometimes there'll be like a person or per group. Yeah, because the photo shoot is under an hour. You got to get all the photos you can oh. get within the time that you're there. Wow. And they do it for a lot of Instagram. And because uh, when I called them, they said, well, we normally we do this for for Instagram influencers and all kind of people and just whoever wants to do it. And because it's here in Houston, I was like, well, that's easy to do. But it's great to be able to to at least uh, take your manifesting and, and charge it up to the level of you going in and touching and feeling and making stuff really happen. Because one thing I know, about when you want something is that if you put that on your mind and then you step into a space such as that, then it comes, mm -hmm. because I'm going to tell you, remember when I said, we're going to build a podcast studio. Remember I said that? Yeah. And, and as soon as we walked into those tiny houses, which you got a show coming up on that, as soon as we walked into those tiny houses in Austin and the one we first, one we went in was only 156 square feet. I said, oh my gosh, we can get all of this. It don't even look like it, but it's, it's the way you right. Yeah, and the reason they got the 156 square feet is because they went two levels. Yeah. So now you know it's like once I stepped in there, my mind said, "Okay, you know what this looks like now," and I got this. Just people. enough room for one person, maybe exactly. two, but one person, yeah. Yeah, two people. I would say, if, especially if you're a couple. Yeah, yeah. But remember, they those folks out there who live on that uh, property that have their houses already built, they're families. They, they have one to two kids. Mm -hmm. So I think you put the kids upstairs because that's an open space and the adults go behind the door, the closed door, which mm -hmm. is where the back door is. So um, I can see if you have two kids because upstairs and that one that we went in, I don't think you looked up there because that's the one you went to the restroom in. Um, up there- I did, it's just that the ceiling was low. It was low, but not for children. So you could put yeah, two yeah. twin beds in there, you know, and they could stay in there until they're at least five or six. Yeah. Yeah, and so then by then we start thinking about what's the next plan. You know, we get them their own little tiny house and attach it to this or what. But I did see somebody who had a tiny house and they had a storage attached to it, so they could put all of their storage stuff, like probably, you know, like lawn equipment or mm -hmm. all the equipment, Christmas tree things. Stuff like that. you put in the garage. But my final thing again that I want to say is that if you have not gone and test driven your or looked at touched feel set in whatever your favorite car is, especially if it's a luxury car, I'm going to say, please do it. It'll change your mind. It'll change your life. And it'll make you start figuring out, is this what I really, really want? Or is this available to me? Or how can I make it available to me? Because I got a feeling Angie's going to figure out how to make it available to her. Yeah, especially since I know how I want it wrapped. And how much was the Rubicon? 76000 right? Something like that, yeah. yeah, yeah. Look, I remember prices because 
you start you start thinking about okay how much money I gotta save to be able to get because when I when I decided I wanted the Mini Cooper it was after I saw the Italian job mm-hmm. and I then immediately said I'm not buying it unless I pay cash because I don't want to regret it because I you know miss a car note or the insurance is higher than whatever I didn't want to regret it so to keep me from having regret regret I just pay for it so when I bought it then I was like, okay, it's paid for, it's mine. Nobody can take it from me. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't repossess, you can't do anything. Yeah. You, know, you never know what your health might do. You might, anything might happen where you can't pay a bill. So I like the comfort of not having that pressure. But it took me three years to figure out how I was going to pay for it because I had other things that I was doing, business mm-hmm. things I was doing. And by the time I figured it out, I literally woke up one morning, recounted my money, and I said, I'm going to the dealership. And when I went over to the dealership, I sat there all day because they kept telling me we don't have a white car that has a sunroof that's brand spanking new. I asked to the plastic to still be on it. <clears throat> and I asked for everything to be disconnected because until they connect all the wires and stuff to make the engine run, the car is brand new. They've disconnected everything so nobody can steal it or nothing. And I sat there from like 11 o'clock in the morning till about five in the evening. And then the truck came through. I told the man, I said, I'm not leaving today without the car I want because I know that y'all have the car I want. And then I never did tell them that I was going to pay for it. I was trying to pretend like I was going to finance to keep them to drop the price. Mm. But they dropped the price almost $8,000. But by that time, they were like, oh, we didn't know you weren't financing it. Because see, they thought they was going to get over with putting the interest and all that. See, I already knew the game. So I'm sitting there and the, the truck with all the Mini Coopers comes through. And they only had one white one. And I ran outside and I was like, that one right there is mine. So the man, I stood there while the man took all the cars off the thing. And I said, it better be automatic. It better be automatic. He took that one off. It had a sunroof. It had automatic. It had black leather seats. It had a good radio system. And I was going to get it for the price I wanted. And it still had the plastic on the seat. So I got everything I wanted that I went there to get that day. Yeah. They didn't close till nine o'clock. But I went there to get what I went to get that day. And yeah. I drove and I drove home in my car and went back the next day and got the car that I left there. <laughs> but that was a great experience because I had put it in my mind. I had visualized myself driving it. I kept checking the prices. I had already joined the Mini Cooper group and didn't even have a Mini. Mm-hmm. I had already connected with them on Facebook. I just didn't pay my membership because, you know, you have to actually have a mini to pay the membership. But I had already found out who the club was, who the people was. I had connected with them. Hadn't gone to an event or anything, but I just kept saying, hey, I'm going to be getting my mini this year. So I was very, very serious. So when you get your Jeep, join your Jeep group because there's a yeah, big for nice sure. in Houston. We got a real nice one in Houston. So I anyway, heard. Like, like I was saying, you know, I hope that you get a chance to go and test drive one as well. Oh, yeah. We've had in a lot of them, but I hope you get to test drive one so that you can really light that fire in yourself to say, okay, I got this to get in, I got this together, this together, and then that together. <laughs> Man, I can't imagine what it's going to cost to fill it up in gas with the gas prices that they are today. Uh, probably $100. Mm, I'd say eighty five. No, I think those take premium. I think they take premium. Oh, probably. I didn't even ask um some people My that mini I Cooper used to take about between twenty three to twenty seven dollars to fill it all the way up. Now it's taking about forty seven dollars to fill it up. Mm. Yeah, so that's a big change. Even the Buick used to take um you know, $30 to fill it up. And it's taking now 55 to $60, which is a nightmare for the summer that's coming up and folks wanting to take road trips with their children because the airlines, you know, prices may go up too. So yeah. it's, almost like, it's almost like you just better figure out, you know, what can I do to make these things happen? Because if not, it's going to be sad, you know, to not be able to, you know, put it, I'm thinking about the little kids, you know, mm-hmm. um, but that's our show today talking about luxury remember to stay to the end so that you can see some of the cars that we're talking about and see angie sitting in her car and her other sister sitting in the car and just look at it and if you want to see a full gamut of the cars go back and watch our last saturday of the month show which was the what 26 right so the show that we did on saturday yeah. was 26, so, so yeah. that you can see all of those beautiful cars and if you're out in miami man i tell you go over and visit brahman's um car dealership because he's got everything from the baby to the big daddies <laughs> over yeah, there for, and, real. Right, for those of you who care the rolls royce dawn will no longer exist 
as a brand new car after this year. So if you're going to get one, get one this year, because after that, you'll only be able to get used ones. And uh, I, I think that people um, take good care of their cars. I think they do. Um, Claudia Jordan, she just announced on uh, Friday that she just got a, um, she just got a, a white Bentley, white on white Bentley. And I don't know if it was used or new, but what I'm saying is I think people take care of their cars when they're yeah, yeah. That kind of luxury. And so even if you get a used one, I think you're still going to get a good car. Um, the other thing people need to think about when they get luxury cars is those are not 25 and $45 oil changes. Those are $700 oil changes. Oh, like yeah. I was, uh, yeah, like I was looking at the Porsche and the Porsche oil change is $750. So if you're driving a Bentley, it's probably going to be $2,000 for an oil change because the way they have to take the engine out and do stuff with gloves on and take out all of these things just to, just to redo your oil, like the Bugatti oil change is $4,500 just for an oil change, but you only have to do it once a year. Yeah. Because people are not putting miles on those kind of cars. So um, think about all of the things that it's going to take. Like I, I was a little annoyed that the oil change for the Mini Cooper is one hundred and sixty dollars, but I only have to get one once a year. My problem is I drive my car to different events across the world, so I have to get one twice a year. But that's the cost of an oil change. And now that the oil has gone up, it's costing even more because in my Buick, the oil change used to be forty nine. The oil went up, the synthetic oil went up during all this stuff happening, and now it's $87 for the oil change. Mm. So all of those things have to be taken into consideration, the maintenance of them, everything. It, let's put it like this. When you buy a luxury car, you keep buying it over and over and over with all the maintenance, the gas, the upgrades, the modifications you want to make to it. You end up spending, you end up paying for the car over and over. And also, even though you pay for it over and over, you're never going to get the value back out of it if you sell it anyway. Like if I was to sell my Mini Cooper, I would never get the value of what I put into it. Mm -hmm. You know, so I'll never get the value. But um, once they take the wrap off of it, they pretty much have a brand new car because you know that paint is good up under there. <laughs> I bet. So your Jeep, it'll be good. And you can take your Jeep and you can, uh, you can redo the thing. Once you get tired of that wrap, you can redo that wrap um you know anytime you want to because we have somebody in our club that every time we do any event he rewraps his car every single time so he come with a new car that's what i like about it because i know eventually i'm going to want something different oh yeah of course that one is pretty though that you chose that that real pretty iridescent one. well that's our show for today and we just wanted to talk to you about luxury cars so moms and daughters when you get together start talking about what y'all's favorite cars are and, and what car you would like to have i know when i went back through my high school yearbook and it had places in there to fill out. And it asked me, when you get to be older, an adult, what type, what will be your favorite car to drive? And I put BMW, I will drive a BMW. And Mini is made by BMW. So I was just so happy to just go back through that book, minding my own business. And I saw that and I went, oh, I spoke that thing into existence real well. Yeah. So that was kind of fun to be able to go back and see what I said when I was 18 years old, you know? Yeah. But that's our show for today. And we just want to encourage you to go drive your favorite car, your luxury car that you could see yourself having at some point. And um, yeah, that's our show. Yes. And before we let you go, please continue to subscribe to our channel. We are at and past a thousand now. So keep helping us uh, reach our goals. Um, I think it's amazing that we've gotten there in that many months uh, so far. But yeah, keep liking, yeah, commenting. We worked so hard to get there. We're talking yeah. to people. In yeah, it's, we put the work in. We haven't put as much in as we're about to, but we have to. Yeah, so keep doing what you're doing, and we thank you for sure for supporting us. All right, that's our show for today. Bye for now. Bye.